Yo guys, this is Cheese and welcome to this brand new video here on this channel. Today I'm gonna to learn you guys some awesome things. I gotta make it clear for you guys what is actually going on when you're actually importing and exporting a file and what do you have to do with your, your sequence settings. Uh, before we're doing that, we have to realize we have been recording stuff. This is the stuff I recorded for the example of this video. If I help you guys out, make sure to push up the like button. And if I saved your life, make sure to subscribe down below. Get any questions watching the video after the video, leave them down below as well. Okay. Just some Battlefield 1 footage. Where the hell was he? Footage, intro, yeah. What have I been recording in? Of course, you have to realize you have to do the right settings before you start recording. And you don't want to check it afterwards. But if you want that right settings, I will leave a link down below if you're recording with OBS. This is also a video for people recording stuff with camera. So don't worry. I will come to that in a second. This is my raw footage. This is recorded in OBS, but it could also be just a camera file like that one. You go here, you go to properties. If you want to check out what you have been doing in your camera settings, you can go to detail and it will show you it's 9020 uh, by 1080. So that means uh, the height is 1080. That's full HD. It's recorded in 60 frames per second. And the memory speed was 35,000 kilobytes per second. 1080p is full HD. It's 1920 times 1080 the p stands for progressive where i'm going to talk about in a in a split second give me a second okay so this is full hd this is what they call hd 720p 1280 times 720 this is hd full hd this is the resolution of your video you have 1440p which is uh 2560 times 1440 you got 4k which is of course four times as big as 1080. You can see it fits four times in that 4K. That's why it's called 4K. You get it now? Okay. You didn't know that. Probably you know that. You probably already knew that. But uh, they got 3840 uh, times 2160. And this is all in P. If you're talking about YouTube, we're talking about progressive. Uh, interlaced is E and it's mostly used in uh yeah in the television world so now i showed you guys all the different resolutions we are using here on the youtube platform but it also says p here like i already said it pr means progressive which is the way uh your camera is encoding something so i'm going to show you guys right now what i mean with that show you guys so if you see this right here we are shooting at 1080 so that's the resolution P. The P stands for progressive. And that's actually the way how your camera encodes the video to its card. We were shooting in P. P is just one frame like this. Just one full frame. Frame per second. This is one full frame. If we're shooting an I and we're shooting um yeah, if we're shooting an I, we're shooting first off in one frame the uneven lines, and in one frame the even lines so we got 50 frames per second in interlaced we actually only have 25 because we're using two frames to complete one frame so this actually maybe it's a little complicated but i'm trying to make it easier and an interlace you need two frames to make one frame and in progressive you need one frame to make one frame. So if you got fr uh, 50 frames per second in interlace, you only have 25. You got 50 frames per second and progressive, you just have 25. If you got 50 frames per second with this, you only get 25 frames per second in interlace. I just wanted to explain that really quickly. You don't have to understand it. It's not necessary if you're uploading to the internet, but it's uh, only for you guys to know what I'm talking about if I'm saying P. So that was my little speech about interlaced and progressive. It just depends on where you're recording with. And it really has a different way of importing and exporting. But we're just going to talk about progressive a little more. 
Uh, this is 30 frames per second at 60 frames per second. This, this is how you normally record your game video. You record it at 30 frames per second or 60. There's really nothing in between which you would use. If we're talking about using a camera, we're shooting at 25 frames per second or 24 frames per second. Or we're talking about 50 frames per second. This is just how it is. There's no way around it. This is just how it is. If you're using a camera, it's 25 or 50. If we're using a game capture card, it's 30 or 60. So now I told you guys everything you needed to know about the video theory behind everything before you put anything in your program. This is what you all needed to know. Uh, and now you're like, hey, bro, what did I actually capture? Let's go properties. Let's go details. It's 1080. It's 60 frames per second. Of course, to check in this in your settings of OBS. If you guys want really good OBS settings, make sure to check the link in the description. I've got my settings in there, which you guys can use as well. So I recorded 60 frames per second in 1080 with a memory speed of uh, 30, uh, 35 thousands, which is actually my bit rate in the recording program as well. This is just equal to my bit rate. You can see it there. If you did record with your camera, for example, a clip over here, let's go properties. You can see what the quality is. You recorded it as well, 1080p. But here I recorded at 50 frames per second. So different to what I was recording with, with my game device. It's still full HD, like over here, but here it's 60 frames and mine is 50 frames per second. Uh, the memory speed of my camera is 27,000 kilobytes per second and my memory speed of the output settings of my OBS was 35,000 which I also have on 50,000 sometimes but this is just what you need to know before you're putting anything in here so 35,000 is what we got the handle with so now we checked all those things out I'm just dropping a clip right in there which I already did for you guys so I'm dropping a clip right in there I'm going to my sequence settings because I want my sequence settings to be equal uh, to the settings I used in, in in this video right here in that video which I just dropped in so it's 920 by 1080 just place it here place it there check your frame rates check your frame rate at 60 frames per second put it in there uh, just change your preview to 1080i or 1080p uh, 60 Hertz 920 1080 uh, you don't have to put this on maximum because it's just going to be really hard for your CPU or your graphics card. They're just maintaining everything you do. If you put your preview settings really high, it's going to be really hard for some PCs to just render out everything you see in, in the edit. Everything you do in the edit, all the cuts you make, everything you do. It's going to be much harder to make it play. Like there, it took a second, yes, we're on and the here it's easier. Side. If you're really doing a lot of editing, it's gonna be pretty hard. So I'm not, I definitely don't put it all the way on maximum. And you can also choose here on if I wanna uh, see the, all the pixels, or only the half, or Trooper. only a quarter. You can choose that over there. So if you just put that down a little, it's easier Stop to preview, it. but the quality will look less. It's not changing the quality, it's only previewing it differently in here if i want to export something i click on i at the beginning where i want to start selecting the area i want to export go all the way to the ending this is how i always do it click on well, like go one frame in front of it i click on o then it's taking this area too that's how i do it i click on o i click on ctrl m that's how I export Control M, or you can just go uh, click on the sequence, and then you can go export. <laughs> this is so much comp more complicated. Just do Control M. So now we selected the arrangement of what we actually wanted to export. We go, go Control M. You can see over here it's actually exporting. It wants to export everything you selected. Um, then you're dealing with the settings again more settings even more so we're just doing the same settings as we had as our recording settings which we have over here still it's 1920 1080 uh 60 frames per second 
and that's what I already selected, I guess. So you put 1920, 1080, frame rate, 60 frames per second. There you go. This is what I was talking about. You have to put this on progressive, not on interlace, because we already recorded it in progressive. You don't want to re export it in interlace. Doesn't make any sense for, for YouTube videos. Render at maximum depth. This is actually going to render the export at maximum depth. Uh, some stuff about the colors and coding settings about the colors and stuff, which I don't really look at that much. Uh, you go to uh, CBR and then you want to put this on what your memory speed is. This is my memory speed is 35,000 kilobytes per second. So I'm gonna put this on 35 megabytes per second, which is the same as 35,000 kilobytes per second. Uh, now I'm not making my file bigger than it has to be. It's just making it as big as it should be um, equal to my uh, my memory speed of the video I put in here. Let me just choose a location. <laughs> I'll forget that sometimes. I was gonna get 2018 10 10 uh, YouTube tutorial. You see, um, sometimes you just check again if you have everything correct. This takes so much longer to export than you guys probably exporting it normally. But this is um, not making your file too big and not making it too small. So you're not losing quality at all. Only a little bit. Like exporting only, ta only takes a little bit of the quality out. But uh, this is everything you had to do. Uh, let's start exporting. And uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If I helped you out, you know what to do. Give the video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if I saved your life. And uh, there was cheese. Leave some comments down below for me to read. There was cheese. Peace.